Good morning everyone. It's Monday morning. We're going to come together and read from the letter of Titus today. Uh, we've got two days today and tomorrow before we start our Lent series on Wednesday as we read through the Gospel of John right up until Easter Sunday. So we're going to do the three chapters of Titus in these two mornings. So let's start off with um, Titus chapter 1 going into the start of chapter 2 this morning. Let's hear it. This letter is from Paul, a slave of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. I have been sent to proclaim faith to those God has chosen and to teach them to know the truth that shows them how to live godly lives. This truth gives them confidence that they have eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised them before the world began. Now, at just the right time, he has revealed his message, which we announced to everyone. It is by the command of God, our Saviour, that I have been entrusted with this work for him. I am writing to Titus, my true son in the faith that we share. May God, the Father of and Christ Jesus, our Saviour, give you grace and peace. I left you on the island of Crete so that you could complete your our work there and appoint elders in each town as I instructed you. An elder must live a blameless life. He must be faithful to his wife and his children must be believers who don't have a reputation for being wild or rebellious. A church leader is a manager of God's household, so he must live a blameless life. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered. He must not be a heavy drinker, violent or dishonest with money. Rather, he must enjoy having guests in his home and he must love what is good. He must live wisely and be just. He must live a devout and disciplined life. He must have a strong belief in the trustworthy message he was taught. Then he will be able to encourage others with wholesome teaching and show those who oppose it where they are wrong. For there are many rebellious people who engage in useless talk and deceive others. This is especially true of those who insist on circumcision for salvation. They must be silenced because they are turning whole families away from the truth by their false teachings. And they do it only for money. Every, even one of their own men, a prophet from Crete, has said about them, the people of Crete are all liars, cruel animals and lazy gluttons. This is true. So reprimand them sternly and make them strong to make them strong in their faith. They must stop listening to Jewish myths and the commands of people who have turned away from the truth. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure, but nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving because their minds and consciences are corrupted. Such people claim they know God, but they deny him by the way they live. They are detestable and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. As for you, Titus, promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. Teach the older men to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. Similarly, teach the older woman to live in a way that honours God. They must not slander others or be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should teach others what is good. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and pu be pure, to work in their homes, to do good and be submissive to their husbands. Then they will not bring shame on the word of God. In the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely. And you yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Teach the truth so that your teaching can't be criticised. <clears throat> then those who oppose us will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. Amen. Stopping at Titus 2 verse 8. There's an awful lot in the letter of Titus. It's only three um, chapters long the way we divide it up but it is packed full of different things just one thing right at the very start um, in the first couple of verses it talks about uh, I have I have been sent to proclaim faith to those God has chosen to teach them to know the truth that comes to show to show them how to live godly lives 
This truth gives them confidence that they have eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised them before the world began. Paul's just trying to reassure us that God has always had a plan for us and that God has known all of us who will turn to him and put our faith and trust in him. And he wants us to be assured of that. Obviously, these people are living through difficult times and as you read through the letter of Titus, you see that there's a lot of tension going on. Uh, a lot of people telling them they're, they're doing things wrong, they need to do it differently. And Paul's trying to remember, look, God knows you. God holds you and God has held you since before you were born, since before time began. He knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew that you were going to turn to him. Uh, and, and you do have the promise of eternal life through everything that he has done for you. You know, it's amazing to see that and to hear that, isn't it? To realise that God knows everything and to know that God always had the plan. He knew what would happen. Was he created the world, he knew that ways people would turn against him he knew that we would sin that Adam and Eve would fall and yet he still made us because he loves us and so he made his perfect plan for Jesus to come to give us salvation that is an amazing thing you know this week starts Lent which is the start of our journey towards Easter time and to what Jesus did for us you know so often we 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 sometimes might think that Christmas is the pinnacle because it's the birth of Jesus, Jesus coming to earth. But that was only the start of his journey. And Easter was the fulfilment of that journey before he went back to heaven to be with God. So Easter is such an important time for us. But this letter reminds us why it's so important. Uh, because God made that promise to us. Because God knew what he was going to do and that God holds us. So over today and tomorrow, please take the time for yourself to read Titus, to read all that Paul writes there. Again, it's another great letter by Paul. and It's a very easy read, doesn't take very long, um, but there, it's packed full of little pearls of wisdom and also reassurance. So be reassured this morning. In all that you might face this week, on a grey and dismal Monday morning, that you should have the brightness of Christ and that he is shining in our lives. So let us pause and let's pray. Father, thank you again for another week. Thank you again for your blessing over the weekend. Thank you for church yesterday uh, and for a time of just switching off and slowing down and being refreshed by you. Now, Lord, as we head into this week, please surround us with your arms and with the knowledge of how you know everything how you know what's going to happen this week, even though that we don't. How you know what's going to happen in the next five minutes, even though we don't. And in the midst of all of that, that you're there, that, you're lo that you love us, and that you plan an eternal relationship for us with you. Lord, thank you for that. Just give us the strength that we need this day and this week, and go with us now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in this morning. Don't forget that on Wednesday we will start the series on Lent. So I published it on Facebook. Um, if you do need a copy of it emailed to you, the reading plan, then get in touch with myself or the church office and we'll have it sent on to you. Um, also to remind you that on Thursday this week is our drop-off day for Food Bank and also for Women's Aid. So it's between 10 and 12 in the morning and then between 7 and 8 at night. And you can also drop down any church envelopes that you have at that time as well. And hopefully you enjoyed seeing all the faces and the people who were um, saying hello and waving on Sunday morning in our service. If you didn't do it and you want to do it this week, please then either email me or um, WhatsApp me um, a little video clip of yourselves doing that. Uh, it'd be great to be able to include some more again this Sunday. But in the meantime, folks, take care. God bless. See you again tomorrow morning. Bye for now.